Hey there, welcome to another episode of the Sage Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Gillette, the owner of Gillette Solutions and the creator of the Sage Leadership Framework. What is a sage leader? A sage leader is someone that is self-aware. They know their thoughts, they know their feelings, they're able to use that and leverage that as the foundation of their leadership. They're accountable and they hold other people accountable. They have a growth mindset and they empower others to do and achieve amazing things. On today's episode, I have Michelle Cook and she is definitely a great sage leader. In her 25 years of experience in sales and marketing, she assists small businesses via Michelle Cook Consulting, her consulting advisory company. It assists sales, marketing, and government businesses and helps them in their processes. She is also the owner of a Dream Vacations travel franchise called Astera Travel. So I'm excited for Michelle to be with us today and to share her sales and marketing wisdom with us and to learn more about what inspired her to do what she does. So welcome to today's episode. Thanks for being with us. All right, everybody. Well, thank you again for joining us for another episode of the Sage Mindset Podcast. And like I said in the intro, I have Michelle Cook with us here. So welcome to today's episode, Michelle. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Kyle, for having me here. I'm really Perfect. Yeah. excited thank to be here. Yeah. So we just found out we're both from the Pacific Northwest and we both went through a heat wave, but we survived. Yes. Thank goodness. Yes. Yeah. So if you've ever experienced a 100 degree, 100 degree weather before without AC, uh, your house is over 90 degrees, listeners. So it was rough, to say the least. It was. But we're alive. We made it. So We made it through. Absolutely. So Michelle, can you let us know what, what's the inspiration behind your business? What, what got it started in the first place? What's that story for us that got you to where you are today? Sure. So I actually kind of fell into the um, the uh, travel industry. Um, I was working in uh, sales and marketing in the software technology company, uh, and the company sold. And so I took a uh, job, kind of intermediate, as a travel agent working for a large company, World Travel Holdings, and found that I loved it. Um, my background is I'm an Air Force brat, um, have traveled all over. My mother's from Britain, used to go to Britain annually so as, as a child. So I just love travel um, and, and fell in love with it and realized I could purchase a franchise and that's what I chose to do. So. So I'm, I'm missing your, your audio here. That was my fault. Okay. What's the most exotic place that you've been to from, from, you know, kind of from your perspective? Sure. So actually in 2019, right before the pandemic, I was invited to India by the Ministry of Tourism for India and went into Northeastern India. So even most Indians tell me they don't go there. It's an unusual place. So they were opening it up for, um, tourism and um, uh, location. Manipur is one of the states in Meghalaya. And it was it was just fantastic. The people are amazing. It is, um, I had no idea how much I would love and I'm, I'm ready to go back anytime. So it was great. Cool. Yeah, I traveled to India in, I wanna say 2005 or four or something like that uh, mm -hmm. for a short trip. And I went to Hyderabad and um, Muriel Gouda, I think was the name of the, I'm probably saying it wrong, but that's the name of the city. And it, it was amazing. The, the people were amazing, just like you're saying, and beautiful. Uh, and we, we were able to really help, help some folks out too. So it was really neat. But Oh, that's lovely. Traveling is huge. I, I think people, if, if you have, even if you can travel to some place that's I mean our country is just full of all kinds of opportunity when it comes to travel mm -hmm. I mean we we every state's like its own country in our country and so at a minimum you can drive somewhere here and and see some beautiful amazing things what what is your recommendation for getting people to to do that to get it on their calendar get it on their schedule and and get out there and travel a bit I think the the main thing is you've got to figure out First off, where you want to go, make a plan, make a budget, um, and make sure it's realistic. So a lot of times you can have requests for 
a trip and somebody wants to go to Paris on, you know, $500, it's not going to happen. So um, make a realistic budget. And then, um, and, and if possible, a lot of times working with a professional such as a travel advisor, such as myself, it can really um, help because there are times if you're planning your own trip, there are things that you might forget in between such as, oh, I didn't remember how do I get from the airport to the hotel, you know, just that type of trip that can be dropped that a, a professional travel advisor can really help with. And especially right now with the pandemic situation, you want to know, is my destination even open for business right now? So um, I think those those are the things that I would suggest and, and just do it. Uh, it's so um, mind opening, it broadens the mind. Um, you learn so many different cultures, especially if you're traveling to other areas. And I highly recommend that too. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I, uh, my kids are in a full immersion Spanish program through, through the school and my oldest is nine. So she's been in it for four years now. And so she's fairly immersive uh, in Spanish. That's the right word. And then my middle kid is, is, you know, a couple years in and my youngest hasn't quite started yet, but I want to travel to two countries that, that speak Spanish, of course, and, and expose them to those countries, expose them to the cultures that, that come from those various countries. And I was, I had taken several trips to Mexico when I was growing up and it's, it is life shaping to, to experience these other cultures in these, these other quote worlds. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, experience the other people. Yes. Cause for me, it, seeing things is really neat going on hikes and doing adventures it, it's really neat but for me the things that I remember most is the interactions I had with the people that I got to to see you're smiling at me so yeah. I'm, I'm thinking you're of a similar yeah mindset. absolutely yeah um for example when I was in Turkey I was shopping and and a, the Turkish shop owner uh sat us down because we kept asking about you know the the products and he sat us down. He says, in Turkey, this is not how you shop. In Turkey, you sit down, you might have a cigarette, you might have some apple tea, you talk about the weather. Eventually you get around to, you know, what is the price on this product? So just learning that type of difference in, in culture is wonderful and a, a story of a lifetime. So um, absolutely, I agree with you. What a great, what a great uh, contrast to how we do business in, in our country because that mean people are trying to connect with 75 people simultaneously to generate some sort of an opportunity to close business and that is I mean I can't even fathom that pace of mm -hmm. of trying to make a sale or trying to make connections with people but they're deep one would guess they're very deep and and very real connections too even if it's that one time there's still some very deep and real connections that happen because it's an extended interaction, so. I agree, absolutely. That's, that's really that's really amazing. So when you, when you think about your business and the experiences that you've had getting up to this point, what what would you say is kind of that big biggest failure that you've experienced that that was was that? Oh man, that was rough, but you got to learn from it. Well, it, it so it's. It, I guess you could kind of say don't open a travel agent right before a pandemic hits. So that's probably not a good thing. Um, but just some of the some of the things have been, um, you know, trying to use regular marketing where really one of the best things you can use is your own your own trips, your own mm. experiences. Um, when I went to India. Uh, that opened up so many conversations about, well, where did you go? Oh, I'd love to go there, et cetera. So really using your own life experience, especially as a travel agent is phenomenal. Yeah, social media is so strong um, to be able to post on, you know, uh, Instagram and on Facebook, what you're doing, where you've been, um, which can be very difficult to do when you're in a third world country like India and you don't have good internet, but it's, uh, I was able to do a daily diary when I was in India oh, and it cool. was phenomenal. And, and like I said, that really opens up conversations. Whereas I found that taking out a, a, an ad on the internet or just something really brief doesn't capture the interest the same way. Yeah. So, yeah. 
I'm really curious about the journal because I think that with a majority of my clients, I recommend that they start a thought journal, that they start a, a journal because it's it's really powerful for rewiring your brain to changing mindsets, but it's also great for memories. It's, it, there's there's a, hundreds of reasons to, to journal. <laughs> From your from your experience doing that, what are what are some of the insights you've gathered from taking notes on your travels, taking notes on your experiences? Well, I think that it it helps you to clarify a lot of what you've done because you're seeing so much, mm. um, all types of new things. So you get to remember some of the details that you wouldn't otherwise, that that you might have forgotten. Um, you know, as you mentioned, interactions with people. Um, the fact that, especially going through India, they'll come up and ask, please, can I have a photo of you with my children? So having those wonderful interactions and they love it, absolutely love it. Um, to be able to, to remember those details uh, is, is you, you're gonna have stories, but you're gonna have much deeper stories if you, if you take the notes. So things stick with you longer. Yeah, it's the exact words I was thinking that the things do stick with you. And then you can use those stories in your own life with other people as examples, even business metaphors. And, you know, there's just so much to it. I have a, I have a, I use a to-do list application and in there. I have a, a project called stories and I have just titles of stories and some of them have a little bit of notes, but sometimes all I need is the title to remind me of what happened. Mm -hmm. And, and I use it in copy that I write. I use it in conversations that I have. And it just, it, my memory is not the best in the world by any stretch of imagination. It's actually, I struggle quite a bit, but having those start, you know, those stems of stories really has helped me to really pull in those experiences more into my heart and into my mind in, in powerful ways. So I, lo I love this idea. What, when you think about your industry, what, what are some of the biggest challenges that, that you face and, and how have you, how have you overcome those challenges? Uh, to go past the pandemic, I think one of the other challenges it can be the fact that um, you've got so many different vendors. So when uh, it's it's one thing to put together a cruise for somebody because that's pretty easy go to. But when you're when you're doing somebody comes to me and says, well, I'd like a tour of uh, Israel and Jordan. And so it's, it's really getting to know um, the area, the destination, if I haven't been there before um, and, and tapping my resources uh, and, and you know, making sure that I'm really trying to get them the best um, offer that works, really suits their likes and their needs, what they wanna do for their money. So trying to give them the best for their, their buck, bang for their buck, I guess, but you don't want to always, I, you don't want to think on your budget when you're putting together a trip, you've really got to think on your client's budget because what I might say, oh, I can only afford this much. My client might be, oh, I've got three or four times that I, I can put this out there. So you want to not limit yourself to your own mindset you've really got to open up to your clients. It's interesting. That's a different filter and it's difficult at times, I would imagine, to, to be able to do that, to pull back and go, wait a second, the trip that I want could be very different than the trip that this client wants. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's a metaphor for interacting with, with, with people in general when it comes to business. What I want for the person I'm interacting with can be very different than what they want. And, and that's I mean, I imagine you have a very serious set of questions that you ask them to really dive in and you really get to know them really well to get to understand their wants and needs. And that takes time and that takes some patience. Uh, mm -hmm. What kind of a funny question here, but what was one of the more quirky things that uh, one of your clients wanted to do or, or wanted to experience? Oh, I've, I've been asked if, if I could book a ferry from Texas to Mexico before, and it's like, no, there are no ferries, you know, <laughs> so you can get some really bizarre questions. Um, but yeah, it, I think the, the neatest thing that I've ever done was I booked a cruise for a client, the husband and wife were on the phone with me and I was speaking with them and got to know all their needs. They wanted it, everything included. 
And at the very end of it, after booking them, then they opened up and let me know that she had just recovered from a very um, terrible case of cancer oh, wow. and just gone through treatment. And this was her dream of her lifetime. And she just thanked me profusely for doing this for her. And it was so heartwarming to, to know that I was able to touch them in that way and that they were able to have a wonderful, wonderful trip. Yeah, I mean, it was, wow, that is so amazing because that's going to last a long time, that experience, because of the emotional connection that they have with that experience. That's, that's what a privilege for you to be able to do that for them. You know, very rewarding, very rewarding. Real yeah. amazing. So that makes me think about goals. And, and because when you get to do stuff like that, that's big achievement, in, in my opinion, that's big achievement to be able to do something like that for a family. What, what are some of the goals that you've accomplished and what's the big picture? You know, if you were to set this perfect picture of where you wanna go, what, what is that for you? Um, so goals, one of the things that I am, I'm certified special needs. So I have a lot of clients that are a little bit older or have mobility or maybe vision or hearing impairments, even autistic. So um, I'm, I'm certified in, in helping people with those um, disabilities. Um, finding vendors that really suit that is very important to me. Um, but what I also find is, is that often I'll, I'll maybe start with a client that is the senior of the family, the grandparents or whatever, and I end up learning about their whole family because of family trips and so forth. So I learn their grandbabies and I learn, you know, their, their sons and daughters, et cetera, and what they want. And so it's very rewarding to be able to do that and know my, my clients become like my family. So um, I know them so well. Uh, often we just call up and chat, just <laughs> how are you doing? So it, it's, it's very rewarding. Yeah, so continuing that path and continue to develop more and more of those connections, is, it sounds like is the big, the big picture of- Absolutely, of yes. Possible. Yeah. Yes. So one of my favorite things to do with guests is to get their insight on their past experiences and then take them back to when they're you know, nine years old, 10 years old, something like that. And if you were to walk up to your nine-year-old version of yourself and give her pieces of advice, what would you tell her? What, what input and insights would you want to share with her uh, to, to help her moving forward? I would definitely tell her to believe in herself more. Mm. Um, I, it took me too long to leave corporate America and do this on my own for fear of, of leaving that safety net. And I'm so glad that I've done that and, and you know, stepped out off the plank basically um, and, and taken the leap of faith. And telling myself to have more faith in myself, I think would, would be very, very important because um, you, can, you can get, I can get personally too involved with self-doubt and, and you don't want to hinder yourself with that. Um, and, and I'm just really, really pleased that I have taken the leap of faith to launch my own travel agency. So. It is launching a business, owning a business, and then seeing it to start to succeed and then really succeed is, has been personally for me, it's a really amazing journey uh, mm -hmm. and, and a hundred percent worth it for you. When you think about the corporate experience versus what you're doing now, what's the biggest shift? Like what's been the best part of that change for you? I think is, well, basically it's now up to me. So if I, if I succeed or fail, it's all up to me. So the buck stops here. Um, I look at failure as kind of stepping stones. If you're not failing, um, you're not going to succeed. What you need to do is you need to take that inventory, take stock, like you say, do your stories and do write your journal, figure out what you're doing and then pivot. And so it's, it's really important to be able to do that. So um, being able, sometimes when you own it, you can get too attached to an idea and you've got to be able to, like I said, take that inventory, take stock and, and let go sometimes of an idea that you've got that you're like, I know this will work. Well, maybe it won't, 
maybe I need to let that go or, or change course correct. Um, and so that's been, it's, it's a, a fantastic experience, great learning experience. Yeah, and the beauty of it is it's not that difficult to pivot, to adjust, to take the time to reflect, take stock, like you're saying, because uh, because it's up to us as business owners to create that margin, to create that opportunity. And sometimes I think I think with a lot of clients that they look at a situation, they think it's going to take me months to figure out how to change this, and months to to think about this or to create time for it. And sometimes all you really need is five minutes. <laughs> you just need five minutes. And then you have a new perspective and then you can make a tiny little adjustment. And that tiny little adjustment is obviously the, the spark to the rest. Mm -hmm. But you have to take those five minutes. And sometimes those five minutes feel terrifying and scary, but they're worth it. They're mm -hmm. totally worth it because then you make that adjustment and it changes everything. What do you have? What other advice would you share with, with the nine-year-old Michelle? Um, I think I've always been uh, tenacious at, at wanting to experience things. So, you know, um, I would just say, put yourself out there and, and learn and, um, you know, find, find the experts. You don't have to be the expert in everything. Um, what you do is you have to know what your resources are and make sure you find those resources and you use them to the fullest. So, because other people you can rely upon, there are some fantastic, you know, experts out there, depending on whether it's marketing, whether it's sale, what, whatever part of your business is, um, there are other people, for example, in our franchisees that I can tap and say, well, what have you, how did you do this, et cetera? How did you, take it from zero to 60,000 or whatever. Um, that's, that's the key. Yeah. I, I found now that I'm a few years into this, having a mentor, having a coach, having a, I kind of have my own board of advisors that, that they're not, they're not official board members, but they're people that I go to consistently. So metaphorically, they sit around a table and advise in my life. And that those people that really are really great at the specific things that they're on my board for. And that has made a huge difference for me. And, and you talk about confidence building. You talk, you talk about being willing to take these risks and, and go through the fears and everything because, because you know, I know that I can lean on that person. Mm -hmm. And in, in your industry, you, ha you have to. There's no way you can travel everywhere and experience everything. You have to go to other people. And to me, that's a, what a great problem, <laughs> uh -huh. what a great yes. problem to have, to need to go to other people, uh, because that's wonderful networking and so many other benefits to it. And it's interesting because in our industry, you would think, well, well, that's a competitor. Why are you going to them? Actually, we don't think of it that way. There's, there's enough people out there that want to travel. So we're not competing with each people in this industry are so helpful. So anything you want to know, you can go to and, and they just help you. It's just a wonderful. And to do this, you have to want to help people. Mm, so totally. it's, it's really the nature of the industry. And, and um, yeah, there are some there's some great knowledge out there to tap. It sounds a lot like my industry because the coaching industry is full of people that want to support and help one another. Uh, and there's a ton of competition out there for sure. But at the same time, there's this communities of coaches that meet together and work together, support one another. So uh, there's so much value in that. It's a wonderful thing. So Michelle, yes. what is the best way for people to connect with you uh, and learn more about what you do and potentially work directly with you to go on a fantastic trip? Um, I have, well, I've got my website, which is astaratravel.com. And so you can always go there. We, we constantly have uh, deals and vacations, but if there's something you, you want to do that's unique, that's not there, just reach out to me and, and you know I will sit down, get to know what you want, what you're looking for, your likes, your dislikes, and build it from there. Awesome. And that's, that's really what I do. 
And you said that you specifically work with uh, people with disabilities. Is that correct? Is that what I heard? Often it's, 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 I again, fell into that. A lot of my clients ha are mobility impaired or they may need a scooter or, or something to that effect. And, and so I got certified in order to be able to make sure that when I'm sending somebody on a trip, I don't miss, like if they're flying into an airport, they need to have access from, from one terminal to the other, for example, and getting that done, getting that completed by the airline and making sure that I've got that done, having the handoff so they don't have to worry while they're traveling is a specialty of mine. So, awesome. yeah. yeah, so listeners, if you or you know someone that that's a would be a great fit to remove all that worry about I mean, the logistics of that are far more complicated. So Michelle can remove that worry. So get in connection with her. The, the website will be in the show notes. Click on that link and you can directly connect with Michelle. So thank you very much for being on this episode. I appreciate it. Well, thank you, Kyle. I've had a great time. Thank awesome. you.